In this video, I just want to do a little uh, clarification on my previous sermon that I did. Is it biblical to be proud of someone or something? And the reason I'm doing this video is because a few few of the brethren got back to me and everything, and uh, went, you know had a, had a dialogue with me essentially. And a couple of brethren actually disagreed with it. And I actually very much appreciated hearing what they had to say about the passage. And after examining and looking it over and, and you know, praying on it as well, um, I'm not really sure at this point. You know, what basically the way what my study was, um, you can go back and watch this, the previous video before this one. But basically it was just on the fact that Psalm 31 verses 20, 22 to 24 Basically, they, it has this wording in there of a proud, that the Lord plentifully re rewardeth the proud doer. So I looked at that and I said, I was shown it by a brother actually, a brother in Christ. And I looked at that and said, well, if God rewards the proud doer, I guess someone being proud for something that they do, taking pride in their work, must not be a bad thing. Now, other areas of scripture, pride, uh, this pride which is this stubborn, I'm better than you attitude that the scripture condemns wholly and completely, that's wickedness, but being proud of your work and things like that, that look, looks uh, different in scripture. And I talked about that in the sermon. You can go watch that to get more uh, context in case you haven't seen that previous video. But a brother came to me and he had uh, some issues with the study and he disagreed with me and he wanted to edify me and help me out and everything and uh, correct me if I was wrong and stuff. And I really appreciate him. I appreciate, I appreciate that kind of stuff. It's important to make sure what you're preaching is correct according to the scriptures. You know, um, you don't want to preach something that's wrong. Not ever. I mean, it's it's not, <laughs> you know, you're, this is God's book we're talking about. So, um, all the Baptists say amen. <laughs> I, I said throw that in there. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the idea being is, uh, you know, you don't want to preach something wrong. And what I want to basically go over is just how I, I re-looked at the passage. And like I said, I still honestly really don't know. And what I want to do in this video is just offer you the other two different ways of looking at the passage. So there's essentially three ways you can look at this passage. The first way is the way I talked about in my previous sermon. The other two I'll go over here in just a second. But we'll go ahead and read the passage together. So if you have your King James Bible, make sure you do. Um, turn to Psalm chapter 31, beginning in verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock, for in house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, there, therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I'll be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities, and hast not shut me up into the hand of the, of the enemy. Thou hast set, me, set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, mine eyes consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without, without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side, while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times, my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. 
For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and ye shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So that's the whole passage. And what the brother pointed out to me was is the preceding verses, um, the verse 18, which speak grievous, grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. So basically what the brother was saying is that this proudly and contemptuously goes down into uh, verse uh, 20, verse 22, before that, oh no, verse 23, and plenty for reward the proud doer. So basically what this brother was saying is that the proud doer isn't actually uh, the, the faithful person here in verse 23. It's actually a reference to the evil, the men that are persecuting uh, uh, King David here, basically. And the thing is, is that that's what he believed about the passage, and he, he shared that with me, and I looked it over and everything, and I again, I'm still not 100% sure. I don't know if that really goes into it. I mean, and he plentifully rewarded the proud doer. Another thing, too, he pointed out is that a lot of times in the Bible, it also talks about the Lord, um, the Lord basically rewarding evil to people. The Lord is basically, uh, the, when it says rewardeth, rewarding evil. But it doesn't say that here in the uh, in the verse. So that's why it's kind of a, it's a cha it's actually a very challenging verse. Because I'm as I mentioned in my sermon, uh, this is the only area of scripture that I've seen where the word pr proud or pride or anything like that shows up as a positive, if that's what this is right here. And that's why, it, again, I kind of a straight betwixt too. I'm not really sure about it. You know, I take I still take the position that it could just be saying that someone who's proud in the work that they're doing for the Lord, basically, that the Lord's just rewarding them. But it could also be the preceding verses, somebody who is proud and the Lord's reward the Lord is rewarding evil to that proud doer. Now it doesn't say that, so it's challenging. And that's the other way of looking at it. You can look at this proud doer as someone who is wicked, the preceding verses, the wicked people that are persecuting and speaking against the Lord and things like that. You could look at it that way. And then the other way I, I thought was interesting, I actually decided to give this a look. If you uh, read Peter Ruckman's Psalm commentary, Peter Ruckman says that the proud doer is the Antichrist. So, uh, I mean, Peter Ruckman thought that this proud doer was a reference to the Antichrist. You know, the brother that got with me and everything and talked to me about it, uh, he he believes it's the, uh, the persecutors that are speaking proud things and everything. I don't know. All I can really say is, is rather than take one militant position on the thing, I would just have to take this offer. I basically have to offer all three different ways of looking at it. You can look at this as someone who, who positive, uh, proud in a positive light. The word proud meaning that someone who's just proud of something. Or you can take it as, yeah, it's the wicked people in the preceding verses, and it's just another wicked reference to proud. And you could also, if you if you read Ruckman's commentary, he talks about how it could also be the Antichrist, essentially, is what he says. So those are the three different ways of looking at it. Now, the reason I still take the position that this verse is just talking about being proud in your work and it being a good thing is because... Uh, Pride in the Bible. I've done a word study on on word. I have a study on pride. You can look. You can find it on on the channel here. You can look in my studies, and you'll find uh, my video on pride. Um, every reference I went over. When you look at pride, it is this stubborn, I'm better than you, high-minded attitude that people have. That's real pride, and that's what the Bible condemns as wickedness. Now, the type of pride that someone feels for like their child, because that was the that was basically the thing that I was, that was the case that I was making for this whole thing in my sermon is how when someone says they're proud of their child, it's not a bad thing to say that. When you say that to your child, you're not really saying that in the stubborn, wicked, you know, I'm better, my child's better than you or something. It has nothing to do with that. It's just this kind of feeling that you feel for your child. You know, I'm so proud of you for doing this. You know, you, you uh, chopped all this firewood today, for example, you took care of the chickens, you, you know, you were, you were so good. You were so responsible. I'm proud of you. You know, it, it's kind of something where like, if you say I'm honored of you, that's a good thing too. But you know, the kind of the, 
the wording. It's just, you know, the whole thing of really the intent there when you say you're proud of your children, it's not like you're looking to, inf you know, it's not like you're saying they're better than everybody else or something, something like that. It's just kind of a word that we all really use and have used in this culture for a while. So, you know, it's different from then is uh, obviously it's a different kind of proud than the whole I'm better than you, this, that, and this. I talked about it in my study uh, uh, previously, but just to kind of reiterate why I believe that this is still saying that. But that being said, I can't say 100% for sure. I mean, the, the verse is far too vague, and a few of the uh, points that the brethren brought up to me I really appreciate. So I really wanted to just offer all three different ways of looking at the verse in this video because I'm not above correction. And I, if there is an issue with something that, that's been preached, uh, I want to make sure and correct it and make sure I'm right. And since I can't really draw a yay or nay necessarily on this, this whole passage here, I'd have to just offer all three different ways of looking at this, this verse. So that's what I'm doing with this video. I was going to make this a lot. I was going to do a live stream on it, have a little bit of fun, do a Q and a with some of you brethren out there, but I decided just to do just a, a, just a recorded video here to just put it out there and let you brethren make up your own minds. You know, it's, I'm not your final authority. Remember that when you're watching this ministry. I'm not the final authority that's here to tell you this, this, and that. No, you have to follow along the scriptures, and you have to also draw your own conclusions. If your conclusions conflict with mine, I'm more than happy to hear about it and, you know, talk with you and everything like that. And if it's, if you're correct according to scripture and you want to correct me, amen. Amen and amen. So, with that being said, that's the, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to do this to kind of bring some clarification and just bring the other different ways of looking at it just so if you're a brother out there, you can make up your own mind about this passage. You know, make up your own mind, be, be fully persuaded. You know, you don't have to tell your children you're proud of them. And when I, you know, in my previous video, when I was mentioning that, like I said, it's, it's, it's not the same, you know, inflated, it's not the same... I'm better than you, wicked type of pride. Just that kind of that feeling you feel of admiration for your children. You're proud of them for doing this. Stuff like that. And just to kind of also, um, so like a, and also another thing too, is uh, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. But let, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So again, just kind of reiterating what I meant about this, about my previous study and everything, the idea of this feeling of proud and all this stuff is that, you know, rejoicing in yourself, rejoicing in yourself about work you've done for the Lord or just your work in general, you know, being, being proud of it again. And just saying, if that's, if you agree with, uh, with the study on that part, praise the Lord. And if that's correct, that's correct. If you don't, if you disagree, absolutely. I get it. You know, it is a very vague passage and that's why I just figured I would do this video, just kind of offering up the other three different ways, that, well, the other two different ways that you can really look at that verse and let you brethren out there make up your own minds. So with that being said, that's the end of the video. I pray these are, that these are a blessing to you, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.